you like fishing so much that you want to take it with you everywhere you go? Well, today I want to show you a product that will help you do just that. And it's actually right here on my backpack. See how small that is? Hi, my name's Ethan, brand ambassador for Discount Tackle, and today I'm gonna to show you the Daiwa Presso Travel Rod. Now, this particular rod is actually a five foot six ultralight model, so this is gonna be really, really awesome for panfish, trout, small bass, so on and so forth. I recently got it, I've tested it out a little bit, but one of the things that really stands out to me is just how small this thing is. Look how tiny it is. It's super easy to take with you. Now, obviously, I'm not traveling today, but what I did do is I hiked into a new fishing spot, and just because it's called a travel rod doesn't mean you necessarily have to be doing a big travel excursion, but if you wanna be able to pack something light and not have a big old fishing rod in your way, this is a really, really cool setup. As you can see, this rod features four pieces and stores easily in its little rod tube. Simply put the pieces of the rod together like any other multi-piece rod, add a reel, throw on some line and a lure, and you're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so as you can see, I went ahead and put all four pieces together. This is a five foot six ultralight, like I said. So this is a really fun rod for just about anything that bites because it's such light action. Okay, then we just add the reel. This happens to be a Daiwa Revros LT1000. I got it because one, it looks really cool on this rod. They pair up really nicely, but two, it's an awesome little ultralight reel. Super, super lightweight. It handles light line very well. And uh, honestly, it doesn't break the bank too much. What's nice is obviously a reel doesn't take up too much space. So you can just throw that in your backpack. You can throw it in your suitcase, whatever you gotta do. Okay, now we just gotta rig something up. Yes, I'm wearing a fanny pack because it's so much easier. I can easily access stuff. I was planning on fishing with just a little bobber and some Berkeley Gulp for a bluegill, but because it's kind of windy, I'm gonna go ahead and try this Rapala original floater. This will be a fun little bait to fish on an ultralight and it might be able to catch me a bass. It might catch me a jumbo pan fish. You never really know what you're gonna catch with something like this, so. I figure I'll start with this and I'll change it up if I need to. Now I actually went ahead and spooled up two pound monofilament on this reel, but anything from two to six pound is great for ultralight. So a little bit about the area I'm actually fishing. This is a highly, highly, highly pressured body of water. The reason that I decided the travel rod would be good is because that would allow me to not have to lug a rod out with me and I can hike it back to a spot that might not get as much pressure. Okay, so I've worked this little jerk bait in this area quite a bit now, and I gotta say, really, really like the action of this rod. It's not so flimsy to where it gives a ton. Look at how that rod tip bounces. It's got enough backbone to where you can really work a little jerk bait like this. I gotta say, the balance of this rod is really, really good for an ultralight. One of my biggest things that annoys me about ultralights is when they make them so weak that they're just like a noodle. <gasps> oh, Bluegill got it! Bluegill got it off the surface. Heck yeah. I literally let it float up to the surface and this little guy came and smashed it. I don't care that he's small. Top water action, baby. Love it. Well, there we have it. The first species of the day is actually a bluegill. I was totally expecting a bass, but I will take anything I can get. <laughs> There's so many little tiny bluegills coming up and swiping at it. They can't get their mouth around the treble hook. They're way too small. There's got to, oh, <laughs> he's so small. I don't even know how these fish honestly attack these things. Bluegill can be a real riot. Okay, where are the bass at? He got it in the mouth, look at that. If this is gonna be a day of dinks, that's okay, I guess. I'm hoping we can find a little bit bigger fish. Okay, so I just fished with the gulp maggots for a second and actually caught a little green sunfish. Got him. I didn't know we had these in here. It's a green sunfish, but that was kind of boring to me. So I'm going to fish with these gulp minnows. I've had really good luck with these things in the past. So we'll see what we can do today. There's a fish. Oh, just a little bluegill. Man, he choked that gulp minnow. My gosh. I guess this was the right change. Just a little guy, but he hammered it. Got him. I don't even know how I'm hooking fish like this. Okay, today has been a total day of dinky sunfish, but I tell you what, I'm still having fun. In my experience, these gulp minnows work really well for larger sunfish, so I'd have to believe that we'll get one of them at some point. Okay, hmm. we obviously gotta move because these fish are way too small. I'm gonna move around just a little bit more. Sight fishing him. Got him, there we go. You know what, he's not big, I tell you that but he's way bigger than the ones we were just catching. At least somewhat respectable. You look how girthy he is. I saw him and I sight fished him. That was a blast. There's another one. Dang, that's a pumpkin seed. All right. Oh wait, that's a bluegill. It is a bluegill. It was so pretty. I thought it was a pumpkin seed. There's our best bluegill of the day for sure. 
and he choked that. I let it sink just a little bit deeper next to some brush and this guy hammered it. That's a much nicer bluegill. Still not a giant, but a much more respectable fish. I love it. There it is. Finally, we got our bass. Finally, we got our bass. There we go. That's what we wanted. Not a very big one, but what can you expect? It's ultralight fishing with light gear. Isn't it amazing how much harder bass fight than bluegill? Gotta love it. I knew we'd eventually get one on that. Man, he's not very healthy looking. I'm gonna throw him right back. We got bluegill, bass, green sunfish. Awesome. Okay, quick update for you. I wasn't doing too hot until all of a sudden I put on the Berkeley Gold Minnow and I tell you what, that's kind of turned my day around. I've got a little bit more time to fish. I obviously have to hike back to my car here shortly. So I'm gonna see if I can catch a couple more fish. I'm pretty pleased. I gotta say, this rod is super fun. It hasn't had any issues for me yet, and I really, really like the balance of it. I would highly recommend this rod for anyone that likes to travel and likes to fish in different locations. Also, I know this video is not about this reel, but I freaking like this reel too. It's super lightweight. There, I got him. Decent. Not as small as some of the ones I've caught, by all means. Again, look how far down the throat that is. They're really eating this uh, minnow good. I would love to catch, you know, like one of them seven, eight inchers, but I'm just not seeing any fish that size. There we go. What's this? Oh my gosh. Um, it might not be the size most people target, but I tell you what, I'll take it. I don't even care. Today has been a day of dinks, but that's kind of what I'm all about. So you know what? I'm happy. There's a fish. Oh my gosh. It's his cousin, Larry. We just caught David. And I just caught his cousin, Larry. Larry's just slightly larger than David. I'm sorry, dude. He's back. Bye, Larry. Tell David I said hello. Oh my gosh, a snapping turtle is emerging from the depths. There's fish. What is this? Daggummit. No way. I caught Larry. I caught David. And now I caught Ricardo, their long lost cousin. Oh my gosh, you're kidding me right now. I don't know. I guess I'm just in the nursery right now. You know, that and the fact that I'm using a tiny bait obviously is gonna attract smaller fish. Some of the smallest fish I've caught in a while. Actually, I take that back. I catch fish like that on pretty much every fishing trip. If you wanna see more of that type of action, check out my YouTube channel. It's linked in the description below. Also, I failed to mention all of the gear that I'm using today will be linked in the description below. All of it is available at discounttackle.com, and I gotta say, they have extremely good prices. On a more serious note, when you're fishing with really lightweight stuff like I am today, one of my biggest tips for you is to always watch your line, because detecting bites can be really challenging, especially when you catch dinky fish like I do. But even big fish, a lot of times, are very light with their bite, especially on small stuff. They'll just kind of suck it in, they'll keep swimming. And if you don't watch your line, you won't pick up on those bites, and they might spit it out by the the time. What's this? What do I have? Oh, no way. No way. I got to get out of this location. This one at least is slightly bigger, but he's still an absolute micro. I think, oh my gosh. Okay. Bye. Bye. I think that if I was fishing a tournament right now, a small fish tournament, I would win. Anyways, what I was saying is just always watch your line when you're fishing with lightweight stuff, ultralight equipment, um, anything that's just lightweight that flutters to the bottom really naturally. I'm going to start making my way back to my car and I'm going to fish along the way back. Go. You're kidding me. You are kidding me. I move locations and what do I find? Another one of these guys. I think what this is definitely telling us today is that fish in this size feed heavily on little one inch minnows. Big fish are probably feeding on much larger prey, whereas the small yearling bass love stuff like this because it mimics exactly what they eat. Small insects, small minnows. That last Berkeley Gold minnow I was using got all ripped up. So I'm gonna go ahead and try these little Bobby Garland uh, crappie baits. You know, it's a slightly larger profile than that Gold minnow. Who knows? Maybe I'll start catching some like eight to 10 inch bass. Oh man, look at that. Look at that. Nice bluegill right there. Solid gill. Really pale. But I tell you what, that might be one of our better uh, bluegill of the day. And I think increasing the size of that plastic might have uh, been the reason we caught him. Got him. There we go. He's still a dink. 
but at least he's bigger than some of those absolute micros. I'll definitely take it. On a five foot six ultralight, you cannot complain about fish like this. Man, he choked that. You know, this bait is actually slightly bigger than the, the Berkeley Gulp Minnow, and maybe I'm gonna trade up in size to fish about this size, and it's all just about the size of the bass in relation to the size of the uh, food that they prey on. I mean, it's a theory. It certainly makes sense in my head. There it is. Boom. Oh my gosh, I love this. I love a two pound test. I love it when bass pull so hard. This is awesome. Just a little fatty. Ultralight action, little bass with ultralights is never a bad time. I love little renegade bass like this, man. There's just something beautiful about a fish like this. You see this Daiwa Presso travel rod right here? It's awesome. You gotta pick one up. Super fun. All right, see you buddy. Last cast. I know I said last cast a second ago, but there's totally a bass right here. And I think he'll eat it. There he is. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. He was patrolling the area and he was just a little guy, but I had to sight fish him because I knew he was catchable. That's what we're ended on, just a little guy like that, but I love it, I love it. Okay, folks, I tell you what, that's gonna be a wrap. I know today was kind of goofy and we caught a lot of small fish, but ultimately the point is, is that this rod and reel is super cool. It's super portable. You can take it with you no matter where you go. And I guarantee you one thing, I'm gonna be doing just that. This little five foot six ultralight is a blast to catch small fish on. I can't wait to start catching some big fish on it. What's great is I can just leave it in my car. I can throw it on the side of my backpack and it's never gonna get in the way. Ultimately, if you're looking for a good ultralight travel rod, I think this is a super cool option. You can check it out in the links below. Low. Discount Tackle has great prices and they've got a lot more gear. So go check out their website. We'll catch you next time.